there's more attention being paid to mortality. And so when we run a typical nursery trial, we're now it's much more common to keep track of mortality and morbidity. And as examples, I mean, this can be very significant. As an example, uh, in my consulting, I do work on new product development, feed evaluation, those uh, among other things. And uh, we completed a trial where uh, the product that we were evaluating did not really change the performance of the pigs but it reduced the mortality. And this was as a Marna had a terrible PERS break. So in the control pigs, they had over 10% um, uh, mortality, pre-winning mortality, so pretty bad situation. But the mortality was reduced to 8% um, by this particular ingredient. It happens to be a, a protein source. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Blood Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today we'll continue our discussion with Dr. Joel Patience. Dr. Patience is a professor emeritus of animal sciences at Iowa State University. What we have been discussing with Dr. Patience are the trends over the past decade in feeding and managing wind pigs. If you think about maybe, you know, Summarizing a couple of the positive trends, what do you think are maybe those two that will be most relevant? I've got a couple here that I think are really important. And one of them, I'm sure you've seen this because you go to Midwest and many of the listeners here will go to Midwest or other uh, conferences, that the um, there's more attention being paid to mortality. And so when we run a typical nursery trial, we're now it's much more common to keep track of mortality and morbidity. And as examples, I mean, this can be very significant. As an example, uh, in my consulting, I do work on new product development, feed evaluation, those uh, among other things. And uh, we completed a trial where uh, the product that we were evaluating did not really change the performance of the pigs but it reduced the mortality. And this was as a Marna had a terrible PERS break. So in the control pigs, they had over 10% um, uh, mortality, pre-winning mortality, so pretty bad situation. But the mortality was reduced to 8% um, by this particular ingredient. It happens to be a, a protein source. And so if we had not measured that, we would not realize that here's a product that can reduce mortality and, you know, when you sit down and pencil it out, uh, mortality costs us a lot of money or reducing mortality can save us a lot of money. And in, in another study where they looked at mortality uh, in the grow finish barn, that previous study was in a nursery in grow finish, they reduced mortality from 7% down to 3%. Uh, and this was the instance of a uh, of a, um, uh, a feed additive that was only added at 0.01%. So increasingly, we see the industry evaluating feed, evaluating additives, evaluating management on its impact on nursery mortality. However, there's a problem. Uh, it's never that easy, right? And the problem is it's really hard to run a trial that's going to show statistically significant differences in mortality. You need a huge trial to do that. And most of us don't have the ability to run that big a trial. And quite frankly, to run a big a trial that big and control it well enough for disease in order to measure this could be very difficult. So my personal recommendation is instead of worrying about running a huge trial to measure mortality, run a number of trials and see how much repeatability you get when uh, you're feeding this particular feeding program or trying this management system and seeing how repeatable the improvement in mortality is. Because in my mind, um, three, four, five trials that all show an improvement in mortality is more gives more confidence to me than one huge trial that gives me a statistically significant difference. So I think the measurement uh, and keeping track of mortality is a particularly uh, in, uh, valuable trend that's going on. We're seeing a lot more attention being paid to fiber 
And um, before I retired, uh, Chin Yung uh, Lee was a PhD student of mine, and she ran a trial and showed that uh, adding soluble fiber uh, to the phase one nursery diet uh, dramatically reduced the attachment of the pathogenic E. coli uh, to the gut lining of the pig. And of course, if the E. coli don't attach, they can't do their damage to the pig. And it's much easier for the pig to fight that. And she was able to reduce the attachment uh, from just under 40% to 10%. So that's a, that's a big, big difference. So increasingly, we're seeing people doing research on different fiber sources, different fiber combinations, fermentable versus not fermentable, soluble versus not soluble, uh, to help to identify the, um, the, uh, the right balance of fiber to maintain performance, but also improve the health of the pig. And then along with that, another, when you talk about most relevant changes, the one that I think we're going to see a lot more of, we're starting to see it already, and that is measuring the digestibility of protein in the diet and in a, as a way to reduce diarrhea in the newly weaned pig. So for many years, I, actually going back way more than 10 years, we talked about feeding low protein diets in the, to the nursery pig in order to reduce uh, diarrhea. But it was really inconsistent and we get frustrated because sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't work. And uh, of course the producer gets frustrated. Well, increasingly, and a number of uh, labs have been working on this. This was discussed at the Digestive Physiology and Pigs Conference in uh, Wisconsin last May. There was a lot of papers on it uh, from Europe, North America, and around the world looking at re the, um, uh, the digestibility of the protein because if the protein gets digested before it gets to the lower gut, then it can't be fermented by the bacteria which are in the lower gut leading, potentially leading to diarrhea. And so the management, not just of the total amount of protein in the diet, but the digestibility of that protein is, uh, is proving to be very valuable. And I think we're going to see a lot more work and a lot more progress in that area. Fortiva is moving beyond feed additives to create foundational ingredients that work with your pig's physiology to support resilience and health. With proven technologies like Ambitine, Flow Matrix, and Endura, Fortiva helps you address the toughest challenges in swine production. From gut health to growth performance, together we can make animals more resilient in the face of future challenges. Learn how at FortivaImpact.com. Oh, that's excellent, Dr. Patience. You know, I mean, and, and summarizing those those two things that you, you mentioned, um, from the mortality standpoint and also from from the crude protein standpoint. So first of all, mortality, you know, consistency among, you know, what what technologies are out there and you know how consistent they could be, could be very valuable, as you're saying. And and the fiber is is a fascinating topic that we need to learn more along with the with the crude protein level in the diet and how can we get consistent results from the pigs, you know, combining those those uh, um, strategies that you share with us today. Well, I, I don't want to let you go before, of course, we have talked a little bit more on the positive things, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask one more question if, if you are okay with that is, which negative trend concerns you the most right now? Yeah, and I'll be very, very brief because I'm watching the clock as well. And uh, what I'm uh, most concerned with is um, I think sometimes we, we are are evaluating uh, feeding programs, uh, ingredients, management systems in too short a time frame. We look at what's happening in the nursery and we're not considering what happens to those pigs after the nursery. And were there things that we did uh, to those pigs or for those pigs in the nursery that actually help them later on. And for example, uh, Dr. Moser at Michigan State University has shown that if a pig uh, is exposed to a, a disease insult, a, a gut disease insult in the nursery, if that's not dealt with properly, that will stay with the pig for the rest of its life. And so I think we need to take a longer term view of how we're evaluating our nursery feeding programs and our nursery management programs. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good point. And 
at the end of the day, that's what pays the bills, right? I mean, uh, those picks that you know you're producing, and a, a lot, a lot of times we we don't we, we do not we do not understand what's that long term effect on that. Well, unfortunately, that's all the hype that we have. That's all the time we have today, Doctor Patients. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Bell podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us in our next episode.